CIMIT is a nonprofit consortium of Boston teaching hospitals and engineering schools. CIMIT fosters interdisciplinary collaboration among world-class experts in medicine, science, and engineering in concert with industry and government to rapidly improve patient care. I'm responsible for uh, leading the CIMIT Accelerator team and um, I, I like to start most of my presentations with this slide which originally came out of Raycom and um, the notion is uh, how difficult it is to get particularly a medical device uh, out into the marketplace um, and many people have, have historically thought about just this first part of the world I have an idea and it works. And in fact, CIMIT in our innovation grant program funds those, those very initiatives. It's something that doesn't exist today and you say, I think I can do this, CIMIT. You make a case to CIMIT that, that you can do this. They give you some money and uh, you prove that it works. What we in the accelerator program do is focus on that a little bit more. So we've, we take it more to the point where it's a commercial or a potential commercial entity. But what's very important to realize is there's a huge amount that has to happen after that to really make an impact on patient care. And at the end of the day, that's CIMIT's mission, to make an impact on patient care. So we can invent all of the cool things that we want and we can fund researchers and help facilitate that work, but if it doesn't find its way into patients, it, it's not really accomplishing everything that it could. So, the objectives of the CIMIT Accelerator are to find, fund, and facilitate projects that have a realistic chance of a handoff to industry or widespread clinical adoption within a year to a year and a half, 12 to 18 months. That's a fairly short period of time, particularly by academic medicine standards. Uh, eventually, this program is hoped to be self-sustaining, um, both through getting returns from the, the investments that we've made and also garnering investments from organizations that are either mission driven or potentially financially driven who are, are looking to uh, collaborate earlier and make an impact in, in specific areas. <coughs> to give you an idea of uh, the deal flow, in any given year, CIMIT receives about 300 pre-proposals. So these are two page proposals that say, I've got a cool idea. These are for the innovation grants. About half of those, about 150, are typically asked to submit a full 10-page proposal. Of those, about 30 get funded. This varies from year to year. Some years it's higher, some years it's less. But um, we've now seen a 10 to 1 reduction from the original 300 pre-proposals pre to the 30 get, that get funded. Of those 30, we believe about a third of them are appropriate for the accelerator. Doesn't mean the other two-thirds aren't good projects but they're either younger in their development stage, so they're still back at the, the, the bench work maybe, or there's some significant thing that has to happen that we can't facilitate, like a big clinical trial. But if you eliminate those, we believe about a third of them, or in this example, 10 projects are potential candidates. We vet those projects very carefully. You'll see in the next couple of slides exactly what we do. We, we hope that in any given year we'll have four projects that make it into the accelerator and then two exits. So we have almost a hundred to one ratio here between pre-proposals coming in and projects that exit the accelerator. In the grand scheme of, of uh, investment statistics or new venture creation statistics, that's pretty consistent what's, with what's happening in the outside world. It's about a hundred to one ratio. But hopefully as we go through this presentation, you'll learn a little bit more about how we differ from a traditional investor. So a few more uh, logistical details. The, the project or the PI has to be pretty well known to CIMIT. Um, you, you've certainly heard the expression, we invest in teams, not technology. And that's true here in our, in our work as well. So we like to know the team or know the project or have some experience with them. The, the principal investigator or the team must accept heavy facilitation from us. So, so what that means is if you get accepted into the accelerator program, we will put our staff into your project and we will work full time with you to make this happen and we will manage it like a business. So there will be milestones, there will be schedules, there will be 
commitments, and there will be quarterly reviews. So this is not for everybody. Um, a lot of people, particularly scientists, um, may not be comfortable with this level of involvement. Um, and, and that's okay. That's not saying that you know, this, this is right or wrong. But um, in our experience, when you're trying to drive something to have a commercial impact in 12 to 18 months, you need that level of focus and that level of dedication. Lastly, um, to be considered, the, the project needs to complete an impact plan. For those of you in the audience that are more business-minded, you'll recognize this as, as a mini business plan. But the impact plan uh, contains the topics that you see in front of you. Unlike a, a, a business plan that you as an entrepreneur may go to an investor with, our expectation isn't that you've got the answers to all of these questions. You may, for example, have no idea about the ultimate cost or pricing of the solution. And that's okay. Really, from our perspective, seeing what in the impact plan isn't filled out is almost more valuable than seeing what is filled out. Because that's pointing to areas that we might be able to contribute. So for example, if you don't know what the regulatory plan is, well, the accelerator team has got access to regulatory resources. We could put staff into your program who are experts in that field and complete that, that hole, fill out that hole. Um, and, and frankly, many times, at, at best, this early in the project, most of these ideas or most of these topics are, um, are subject to discussion and subject to a lot of assumptions. So through this vetting process to get from the 30 projects down to 10 or 4, we'll be looking at a lot of these assumptions. And not in the type of way that you would if you were presenting to a typical venture capitalist, but um, much more in the role of facilitators. Our objective, remember, is to make patient impact. So at the end of the project, if you end up not getting funded, one thing that you will have is a pretty solid impact plan or business plan, because we will have worked with you over a course of months to look through all of these subjects, vet these things, and you'll at least know what you don't know. That, that may or may not be um, an experience that you'll have with a typical VC. So um, I don't expect anyone to remember those nine criteria from the previous slide, but of, of those many chapter headings, there are nine specific things that we're keenly interested in. And uh, though each of those nine things is assigned a score. And that score uh, works out to something between zero and three. So just looking at the center of the slide in front of you, if we consider market size, if after vetting all of the assumptions, we believe that the legitimate market size is over $1 billion, the, the market size score is a three. If we think it's less than $10 million, the score is a zero. All nine of these criteria have very explicit <laughs> metrics. At the end, all of the metrics get multiplied together, not added. So that means if any of the metrics is a zero, it gets knocked out. This is a fairly brutal process. But the point is, if you're going to go from 100 projects down to one project, at even if that one project is not successful, you want to have added value through that, that process. And you want it to be transparent. So no one can come back and say, well, why did Joe get money and not Mary? So part of this transparency is, is in the, these well-defined, well-published, universally understood selection criteria. So a few additional thoughts. Um, as you've probably surmised by now, the accelerator program is quite selective. But that does not mean that the other projects aren't good projects. It just means that it doesn't fit. No less than an hour ago, I sat with a team who had a great project, a, a project that if I weren't gainfully employed at Simit, I would be fighting to be the CEO of this company. But we couldn't fund it because it involved clinical trials, it involved a drug, which aren't in our mission. But we're still going to work with this team to facilitate that project. We're still going to work with them to try to get funding to support their clinical trials. We'll still help them do the business plan. That's what we do here. We're trying to make an impact on patients. 
So just because a project doesn't get accepted into the accelerator program doesn't mean it's not a good project. As I said, we'll do two to four projects a year. Typically, we'll put in $150,000 to $250,000 in cash, which is used to fund different activities, in addition to the various FTEs that are required to support um, holes in the plan. And then uh, we do quarterly reviews on the projects.